Hi, this is Tony from Sonata Arctica, and you are watching Loud TV. It's No, <laughs> it's hard to believe. 20 years, 10 albums. Well, we're not kids anymore, but you know, uh, you never imagine such things when you're a kid, you know, starting off your career, that you are still actually able to do this for a living 20 years later. It's a blessing, it's a great thing. I could not be more happy with it. You know? uh, I think one, one thing is that you're doing something that you genuinely love, uh, doing the music that you like, and, and uh, staying sort of true to yourself in that sense. And, and that's why we have changed, why the band is, uh, the music, is, has, music style has changed from the early days, because that was just a phase that we happened to land our recording contract with, uh, the first one. And, and, uh, the, and nowadays, we are much closer to what we were before we, bega we became some of the Arctica. The band was started like 95, 96, and, and the style was like rock and pop and, and whatever, and not at all metal. So nowadays, we are we have drifted closer to that side of things and 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 and, and maintained the spices and things we have learned along the years. Of course, we have changed, but, um, well, and and a lot and too much, you know, because uh, I think. Uh, Changing things was uh, like a uh, um, commercial suicide in some way. <laughs> some people said well, we were really on the run, rising and, and going forward. And uh, I decided to jump off the plane and then open the parachute before we hit the space. And it's too late to land. So uh, and we get lost in space somewhere. <laughs> so, uh, and I'm really happy with that decision because I, uh, we changed uh, uh, the kind of success and, and maybe getting more money to being more happy and at, at the end of the day I, I, that's that's the one important reason and nowadays the music that we create is actually something that I, I can imagine us uh, also performing when we are older like 60 70 years old or whatever this was a joke still like 10 15 years ago but now I'm 44 and I, it's starting to feel like it, it might actually <laughs> be a reality <laughs> in some point so it, it's uh, uh, that's something you have to bear in mind as well, that when you get older and, and, and you might like lose a lot of the, uh, some of the things that you have as a, as a kid and a younger, and like well, you can't jump around on stage as, as much anymore necessarily and your, uh, what happens with vocals especially, in, you uh, get more depth to your vocals at age with age and you might lose some of the higher end things especially if you have based your singing uh, the way that you are actually singing on the high limit all the time which I did uh, on the first few albums which is crazy and, and that's why I've, I've come back to my natural range slowly it took a long time but nowadays I, I rarely sing anymore uh, uh, with a voice that is not my own I'd say For a long time, like two or three albums already, we have, uh, we've hoped and tried to make the album sound warmer and more organic and go in, in that direction more and, and, and we have tried and tried on our own and, and if you just keep on doing the same thing again and again and again and expect still to have a s different kind of result, you're an idiot, aren't you? <laughs> so, <laughs> so we uh, wanted to change that and, and introduce an outsider who understands our live sound and nobody understands our live sound better than Mikko, who is our front of house live sound guy. So we already talked with him and he was supposed to uh, pr produced the album for us the last time, the ninth hour, but the whole process, the songwriting was so late and uh, it became such a mess, the whole thing, the production phase of things, that uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy that we didn't bring Mikko in it because he would have had a heart attack or something. <laughs> it was stressful and, and not a pleasant process, after all, towards the end of it. But uh, now, with this album, we, I had their songs, like 10 out of 12 songs, I had them ready 
already last summer and I was able to play the whole package of demos to of course band and Mikko as well so it was much easier to bring him into the process which then started in September we started recording and rehearsing the songs in the studio and, and, and the way we approached it is, is that uh, we played uh, drums, bass and partially the guitars live in the studio on the track and it gives it more organic feel and the sounds are more organic and, and, and uh, I hope it, it's more pleasing to, to your ear, at least for me it is and, and, and it it's, uh, hopefully also uh, stands the test of time much better. It's sort of a thing that is going on pretty much right now these days, you know, Ghost and, and Greta Van Fleet that are doing the things the old way and sounding like bands, bands from 70s for example. And, uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy that we have a tiny bit of that in our new album. You know, anything and everything that I like influences me. Devin Townsend for example, you can hear Devin Townsend wipes it here and there also, so yeah. And Queen and whatever, you know, anything. Yeah. Everything. You know, eventually, with time, when you get older, your influences become you, basically. So, it's just you then. It's a, it's a soup. That you just so, uh, kind of choose uh, the ingredients you want to have in your soup, and that soup is you. <laughs> That's one way, one way of putting it as well. Talvi yö, yeah. Why? Um, the name of the album was the last thing we came up with, actually, and uh, we had the album artwork, everything ready, but no name. So uh, we started playing around, touching around ideas. Uh, of course, the name should reflect somehow what you have there. And to put it in words, it's you have winter and it's nighttime. You could have had other. Uh, like more artistic ways of approaching it, more deep meanings and whatever, but but uh, uh, Talvi felt like a word we want to have there, but the guys thought that it, it's too boring to have this Talvi, which means winter. But it, then I fooled around, like I was, I tossed around the word Talvi, well, well, as a joke almost, because I knew that it, it has the uh, the all with dots on it, and, and which is going to make it uh, really difficult for a lot of people all around the world to pronounce at least the right way or the, the way that we do it in Finland. So uh, everybody started laughing and saying that, oh, oh yeah, 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 it's, it's just that it's, it's going to be the right one. That, 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 that's it. Let's do that. And well, <laughs> really, okay, well, it is, and it's winter night. We are still actually on the album. There are songs that could have fit. Uh, at least uh, theme-wise, also on the ninth hour, like Storm the Armada, Who Failed the Most, uh, Demon Skate, those songs are, are vaguely in the same theme, like environmental awareness things and human relationship songs and such, but the uh, one song that actually connects with the album cover is the opening track, uh, The Message from the Sun, which is all about the mythology surrounding Northern Lights. Although you don't have Northern Lights visible on, on the album cover, but uh, they occur in the winter time, uh, so uh, at least in Finland. So uh, that, that's why I feel that it's, it's such a perfect opener. Although stylistically, it's a little bit uh, misleading, uh, I suppose, because it's uh, a song that is leaning towards uh, our early days. It's a power metal esque, uh, anthem like song, but uh, I think it starts the album really well. We'll try to wait. 